Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. If you like all things true crime, if you like it delivered in a peaceful, tranquil manner, if you like it clear and concise without drama, then I highly recommend you subscribe. And if you like what you hear, please smash the like button. It's a free way you can help. And now, without further ado, let's dig in. Well, hello there. Happy Labor Day. I hope you guys are all enjoying yourselves, taking a little time to chill. Today, I'm going to talk about the Madeline Soto case. When Stefan Stern's parents were interviewed after his arrest for the essay An Unaliving of 13-year-old Madeline Soto, they were asked about his recent moods and behavior. They replied that he appeared highly stressed and they found themselves tiptoeing around him for fear he might blow up. He had moved back to their home in Northport, Florida from Kissimmee in December. The Stearns also described their son as volatile. According to the Oxford Dictionary, volatile means, quote, liable to display rapid changes of emotion, end quote. And this volatility has also been mentioned by two of Stefan's guy friends from years earlier. Now, based on Stefan Stern's sloppy behavior, in my opinion, on Monday, February 26, 2024, after allegedly unaliving Maddie, I don't believe that this crime was premeditated. I know that the investigators have said that Stefan searched for a powerful anesthetic prior to Maddie's death, but we also know from law enforcement that in many of the photos and videos on Stefan's phone documenting his essay of Maddie, she appeared to be asleep. So was that down to her own sleep medication or was he already taking it upon himself to medicate her? For this reason, I'm not convinced that the anesthetic was part of a premeditated plan to unalive Maddie. I think Stefan snapped in the early morning hours of February 26, and something drove him in those moments to commit this heinous act where he placed his hands on her neck. Stefan appeared to have had a bond with Maddie. In his twisted mind, he may have viewed her as his girlfriend. Maddie's mother, Jen Soto, has said that her daughter had recently announced that she had a crush on a boy at school. As bizarre as it sounds, I think this may partially explain why Stefan destroyed Maddie. Maybe he thought, if I can't have her, no one else will, or perhaps if I do her in, she will forever belong to me. It's also possible, of course, that Maddie was pregnant, although law enforcement has not said that that's the case. One of Stefan's friends who was interviewed by Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates said this. And he's single, so I was like, dude, you know, you should grab up on that, man. You know, go get some. And uh, he just was like, nah, not interested. And I just, like, it made me turn my head a little bit. Like, what do you mean, not interested? She was just looking for some. And if I was a single guy, why not? You know, who cares? You know? And he was just not interested. And I just, that always like rattled my brain. Like, what? You know, what do you mean not interested? Now I know why he wasn't interested. It just, she wasn't in his age range. She was like 50 years too young. And then also another thing he had said, I knew it was a lie why he was saying, because he's no good at lying. You know, it was just like, he's telling us he had some girl from Disney, some spicy Latina. I was like, no, don't believe that for a second. So he definitely lied. That's a lie that I caught him in. You know, I never said anything to him because, you know what, let him let him talk. Whatever, but I don't think that's true. Did you hear him say he had some girl from Disney, a spicy Latina? When I heard that, I immediately thought that Stefan was possibly referring to Madeline, that perhaps she was his spicy Latina. Her last name, after all, is Soto, and her mother's side of the family is Latino. To destroy Maddie was to lose his little spicy Latina. To me, that had to be a split-second decision 
made because of his volatility, his quick temper, and his violent tendencies. I say that he had violent tendencies because of what two of his friends said about him when he was a younger man. Stefan's longtime friend and sometimes roommate, Chase, said on Grey Hughes that Stefan once pulled a weapon on him. Chase was living with Stefan in an apartment that apparently Stefan's parents owned. You had a gun up above? I think I missed that. I was trying to... Oh, yeah, so we were living together, um, I don't know, probably a couple years into... I mean, this was at the end of our relationship. So we had a disagreement because there was a lot of issues wrong with the house. We were running through his dad. And uh, I didn't want to pay rent because oh, like a whole bunch of these issues, AC, garage, all these things hadn't been fixed and my car was pinned in the garage. And this went on for like months. So finally I refused to pay rent. I was like, look, you got to fix these issues. I'm like, this can't go on any longer. I'm not paying rent until you fix these issues. And uh, his son flipped out on me because I guess his dad was giving him a hard time trying to get Stefan to give me, to give the money to pay the rent. And I was just like, no, not until you fix these problems. And Stefan flipped out the house, threw a temper tantrum. And I, I mean a legit, like, three-year-old temper tantrum laying on the ground, a grown man <laughs> pounding and kicking his feet into the ground and screaming and yelling. And he does all this, proceeds to run into the room, grab his gun, and draw a gun on me. Wow. We get into a scuffle after that. I leave. I never come back. My dad gives me money because I'm broke, you know, I'm broke 20 year old at the time, like bouncing between jobs. And he gives me the money to break the lease because I told him what happened. Did you hear him say that Stefan threw a tantrum when he refused to pay rent? And apparently Stefan's father was pressuring Stefan to get Chase to pay the money. And Chase was like, no, you've got to fix this stuff or I'm not going to pay the rent. So Stefan throws a tantrum, gets on the floor like an infant. And then he runs in his room and he comes back with a weapon that he pulls on his friend. So that's one instance where Stefan actually pulled a weapon on somebody. But in addition to that, at age 14, Stefan actually thrust a sharp object, I can't say that word on YouTube, they don't like it, into the chest of a stranger narrowly missing his heart. How different Stefan Stern's life would have been if he had indeed taken this man's life at age 14. And it sounds like his parents were able to get him out of trouble to keep him from having to pay the consequences of such behavior. Based on these violent outbursts, I think it's safe to say that Stefan Stearns has been a long time ticking time bomb. And it sounds like it was only a matter of time before he committed a crime that there was no coming back from. There was also a woman who Stefan dated briefly during a breakup period with Jen Soto, and the story that this woman told seems to imply that Stefan found death a bit of a turn-on. The woman said that Stefan had trouble performing in bed, if you know what I mean. But one time, when he asked her to lie on her stomach and pretend to be dead and not move, he suddenly performed like a rock star. A hard rock rock star, if you know what I mean. The element of death seemed to make all the difference. Now we've also heard about three separate incidents in which Stefan was caught peeking in on women, either through windows or under bedroom or bathroom doors. When Stefan was a young man, he was caught trying to videotape a friend's mother through their bathroom window. The friend's father caught Stefan in the act. Stefan ran off and tried to hide in the barn, I believe, but he was caught. Stefan also videotaped a friend's girlfriend while she was in the shower. One of our mutual friends was going through hard times and needed a cheap place to live, so he moved in with them. And this kid's like an IT wizard. So essentially what happened is a year after that, they had a falling out. And I convinced my buddy to tell me what happened. And apparently what happened was he had been cleaning up the network and found a shared folder between their computers where Stefan had been secretly hiding a camera in his room and recording his girlfriend coming in and out of the shower. Oh, jeez. And, and from what I understand, there was kid stuff on there as well. And like I said, my buddy was going through a really hard time, like literally broke. 
And uh, from what I understand, his mom paid, Stefan's mom paid off my buddy to not talk about it. We also know from recently released documents that Stefan had videotaped one of Jen Soto's female roommates under the bathroom door. Based on Stefan's long-time behavior doing these things, and on the images he had on his phone of Madeline when she was asleep, I believe that Stefan Stearns may suffer from what's called voyeuristic disorder. Now, I'm not a psychologist, so this is just my untrained opinion. Here's what the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, provides for the diagnostic criteria for voyeuristic disorder. Note that I'm going to have to get a little creative with the language here or else YouTube will not allow ads on this video, so just bear with me. The first one requires, quote, recurrent and intense blank arousal from observing an unsuspecting person who is not wearing their clothes or in the process of disrobing or engaging in blank activity as manifested by fantasies, urges, or behaviors over a period of at least six months, end quote. I think with Stefan Stearns, we're looking at years of this behavior. The second criterion requires acting on such urges with a non-consenting person or experiencing clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning as a result of the blank urges. The third criteria requires that the person experiencing the requisite arousal and or acting on the experienced urges to be at least 18 years old, recognizing that blank curiosity is common during adolescence and puberty. In terms of gender-related diagnostic issues, voyeuristic disorder is described as more common in men than women. Yet individuals who do not meet the clinical definition may nonetheless act upon voyeuristic urges, engaging in intrusive, harmful, and even criminal behavior. For some privacy violators, strategizing a peep show is not good enough capitalizing on the fact that every modern device now has a camera and drones are increasingly available as well, many voyeurs seek to memorialize the unauthorized view, spying on unsuspecting individuals in private areas ranging from dressing rooms to locker rooms to bedrooms is easier than ever before. Upskirting, for example, the act of snapping a photo up a woman's skirt without her consent has received much attention over the last several years as states struggle to identify and amend laws that address such behavior, demonstrating how technology can outpace the law in the digital age. Beyond invading the privacy of unsuspecting victims, some voyeurs also engage in essay. According to Stefan Stern's parents, he had been seeing a psychiatrist for many years. I wonder how open and honest Stefan was in those sessions. Did he only discuss his anxiety issues? Or did he lay bare the full truth of what was going on inside his twisted mind? Let me know what you think in the comments. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time on Bed Crime Stories.